Okay, I wanted to cover a couple of things uh, really quick. Uh, some students are having some issues with a few things, and I just wanted to kind of go over a couple of things that may help you a little bit. Okay, one of uh, the students has um, this piece in their room, and um, where the piece came from is they initially had uh, this model, okay, which was in two pieces, and I guess they've uh, merged them together, and then what they did is came in a non-proportional scale to get it down to the scale that they wanted, okay? Uh, to a certain degree, there's nothing wrong with doing that, but it does uh, screw up the transformations of an object. Anytime you use the scale tool on something, then the relationship of the object to the environment uh, is no longer uh, correct. You have a couple different uh, types of uh, coordinate systems. You have a world coordinate system and you have an object coordinate system, okay? And when you squash something like this now, now the uh, relationship of the object to the world is not correct, okay? And I'll show you an example of this. Now, can you see that the checkerboard pattern that the student has put on this piece, that they're not squares, okay? Let's just isolate this, and you'll see they're not squares, okay? Well, initially you can click on it and they've got a mapping coordinate on here. They're putting a boxing mapping coordinate on here and you can see, oh, well, it's because that their box is not square. The mapping coordinate is not square and that's what's causing that. But if you come over here and look at their coordinates, you'll see that their coordinates are square. And this is something that will be odd to you. If the coordinates are square, then how come this box, this uh, UVW map box is not square? That's because the um, transformations are screwed up on this object and it's passing that on to the mapping coordinate and it's making the mapping coordinate screwed up as well, okay? So I'm gonna dump this mapping coordinate off of here and then I'm going to fix this. Now how you fix it is you come in here uh, over to your utilities, which is this little hammer here and you go reset selected, okay? And what that'll do is put a transformation modifier on it, and then you convert that to an editable poly. And now this object's coordinates and the world coordinates are correct. So now when you come in here and you put a UVW map on this, and we go box, and we take the longest side, which is what we want to do here. So we're going to copy the longest side and put it on every one of these you'll see it's square, okay? Now, once I have it square, I can scale it down. And now you'll see that these are all squares now, okay? So the problem that the student was getting into uh, was because that they had squashed this, but they had not reset its transformation to realign it up with the world. And so when they put in their mapping coordinate, their mapping coordinate was skewed, okay? Now, the other thing that the student was talking about is the amount of geometry that they have in their scene. And so uh, I want to deal with that uh, with the original one. I want to come back to the original one that they got, and that's where I would clean this up, okay? So it's actually in two pieces, okay? So uh, let's just go ahead and take the top piece. And you can tell that whoever built this, uh, they, they, they've got a lot more geometry in here than what they really need to maintain this. So what we're going to do, and I, you can see right up here that this has 50,000 polys in this one piece. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to put a little modifier in here called Pro Optimizer. And what it's going to do is look at the topology of the object and it's going to get rid of excess geometry that I don't need. Now, the thing that throws people off sometimes is, the, is that this is in nice, wonderful quads, which, which is great, okay? But once I get the shape and it's a dead shape, so in other words, it's just somebody sitting there, I don't need it quads anymore. So I'm going to go over here and calculate this, and what it'll do is go to calculation, and it'll figure out what all of the, um, how many, uh, what the vertex count is on it. And you see how it kind of got a little funky in here, and that's because when, you're bringing these in, if it's a 3DS file, it's going to be an editable mesh, okay? And what you're gonna to wanna to do is right click and convert that to editable poly. A poly is just a version of a mesh, but it has some little different qualities about it, okay? So now when I come in here and I put my Pro Optimizer on and I calculate it, what we're gonna do is to come in here and kick this down, okay? Right here where it says 100%, we're gonna kick this down to 20%. 
and you're going to see what it's going to do is decimate this. Okay. Now, what you want to do is I'm going to come in here and turn the um, wireframe off so you can kind of see what's happening to it. And you'll see that it's just barely got any kind of change at all. You'll see some little strange oddities through the center of it, though. Right through here, that's actually what's happening in here is it's actually tearing apart. Okay, can you see it in there tearing apart? And here's why. This piece was not, uh, has not been welded. Okay, so it's got coincident vertices in here. Okay, so if you really look at it, you can see some little areas in here where we're gonna have some little funky things happening. So what we wanna do right now is go ahead and pick all the vertices and weld them. Okay, now you have to watch it because a lot of times when you're coming to weld, it's got a really high number and you can see it's really uh, you know, messing this up. So I'm gonna zero it out and then probably just about a 0.1 is all I'm going to need to probably weld any of those vertices because they're coincident vertices, they're sitting right on top of each other. So now you can see I can come in here and I can and I can come in here and do my crunch on this and you'll see I don't get those tears in it anymore. Okay. And so now I've dropped this down from the almost fifty thousand polys that it, it was down to about nine thousand polys. Okay. So now I can just bake this in, convert it to an edible poly. And then I would go in here and redo the smoothing groups. So I'm gonna pick everything and come in and redo the smoothing groups to make sure it's nice and smooth. And then there is a nice piece. Okay, now you'll see a little bit of little, some shading anomalies in here. I really wouldn't worry about those once you get your shaders on here and uh, you get your texture maps, you won't see that, okay? So I've already cut this down to less than, you know, a quarter of the size that it was before, okay? And then we will do the same to the bottom piece, okay? So we'll isolate this, convert it to a poly. We're going to take all the vertices. We're going to weld them. It should right click zeros this out, okay? And then point zero one would be coincident vertices or vertices that are sitting right on top of themselves so they should weld together. Then we'll do our pro optimize on this. Calculate, maybe down to about maybe 20%. Turn my wire off and look at it. Okay, that looks okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and convert that to a poly and then go ahead and come in here and fix the smoothing groups on it. Okay, now the other thing I'm going to do here is this got some uh, geometry in here that I really don't need. Okay, so in other words, I don't need any of the geometry that's sitting underneath here because we won't see it. So I'm going to pick all the polys in here, okay, and then I'm going to get a slice plane. A slice plane is a plane that you can cut with. And so I'm gonna drag this up and I need to make sure I've got it high enough that uh, we're not seeing any of the other geometry so it'll all be tucked underneath. Then when I click this button split and I hit slice, it just cut that top piece off. So now it's a separate element that I can come in and I can just delete that. And that's gonna take some of my geometry down too. So now I can come in here and I can attach these together and so now I've dropped this piece down to uh, 15,000 uh, polys, whereas that original one had 51,000 polys, okay? But when it renders, it'll be virtually identical, okay? So resetting your transformations before you're putting your mapping coordinate on it. So I can go in here now, I can just copy this coordinate, I can come over here and paste it in here, and then go ahead and drop that same, uh, shader on that and so it's ready to go now another little thing little tidbit okay that you can know is you know the person wanted to scale this down well another thing that you need to know is that yes if i'm at the object level 
excuse me, the object level, and I am scaling this at the object level, then it messes the transformation up. I can always go back and reset it. But if I come in and I grab all of the vertices, okay, and then I scale all the vertices to their center, then it does not mess up the mapping, the uh, transformation on here. Okay, so you'll see I paste that on and it's not messed up. So if you get in the habit of when you're trying to scale something to scale at the vertex level, then you don't, re you don't have to uh, reset the transformation. Same thing you can see on this that uh, if I come up, that it's longer like this okay and you'll see that's messing up those um it's messing up messing up my mapping coordinates when i do that but if i come in here and i get the vertices and i scale it this way we slide through it and so we're not messing up the coordinates that way so Make sure you understand that anytime you do any kind of a scaling, if you scale the object, you have to reset the transformations. And, uh, you know, you if you if when you're getting these models and bringing them in, you know, you, you can't just open up the models. I think some of you guys are being a little bit lazy. I think you think the answer is, oh, I just go find a model and I bring it in and I'm done. No, that's just the beginning because almost all these models, when you bring them, will have problems with them. They'll need to be cleaned up. They might need to be... Uh, the mapping coordinates dealt with, there's a lot of issues with those when you bring those in. So it's not just bring them in and I'm done. No, that's just the beginning, okay? You have to clean them up. Okay, now I've opened up uh, another piece from another student I brought in, and this is a real nice uh, chair. Okay, so nice model, can use this, it's fine. Uh, the students got it grouped, okay, which is good. We only group it, group it. so I'm going to open up the group, and I'm just going to deal with uh, this back piece right here. So I'm going to, um, actually, before I do that, I'm going to close the group. Before I start manipulating this in any way, okay, I need to make sure that it's rotated uh, towards our viewport up here, okay, so... They've already placed it in the room, but it's got problems. And so I'm going to come in here and I want to realign it to my view. Okay, right about like that. J on your um, keyboard will turn on the bounding box. And you can see that bounding box is it's pretty, pretty close. Not exactly right, but it's pretty close. So now I'll open up the group and I'm just going to deal with this piece right here. And let's just isolate that. Okay, now one of the things is its pivot point is not in its center, and I think I would like for its pivot point to be in its center. So I'm just going to go over here and see its pivot point. And you can see that um, this piece, and I think I'm going to turn that uh, checkerboard off so we can just see the geometry. And you see how it's got, you know, everything's triangles. Okay, so you need to make sure that it's edible poly. So you know, when you first get these in, there'll be edible meshes, and this trick won't work if it's an edible mesh. So just right-click and convert it, make an edible poly. Then you can go up in under geometry and hit quantify all, and it will come in, and it will get rid of all those triangles there and make them quads. Now, this piece is pretty decent. It's not too bad. I could probably uh, work with it the way that it is, okay? But if I wanted to clean it up, you know, if I look at the back of it, this is a kind of an odd thing that's going on right here. So uh, ignore back facing, I'm going to come in here and uh, hit our backspace to get rid of these two and then just take these two vertices and connect those. And so then that'll be cleaned up back there. And it's got a little bit of some uh, garbage up here up front, but overall it's not too bad. I mean, I could clean that up, but I'll probably just leave it. Okay. so now. What the student has done is uh, they put mapping coordinates on this, okay? And what they did is they put box mapping on it, okay? Well, you know, the answer to everything is not put box mapping on everything. And somehow you guys have gotten that, you know, I showed you guys how to do certain things with box mapping. And so it seems like that's what everybody's doing now is just throwing box mapping on it. The thing about it is, is, you know, I want to be able to unwrap this so that I can go in and custom paint on this. Okay, 
And I see some people, you know, think they're doing unwrapping, but they're not really doing unwrapping, okay? So we really need to kind of unwrap this to flatten it out, okay? Now, a lot of times, you're going to have to come in here and put some seams in this. Um, I think it might even kind of buckle through here and here, but let's just see without trying to put any seams on it. So we'll just come in here, and we're going to put a UV unwrap on it, okay? And then we're going to go to um, polys, and we just pick one of these polys, and then this button to expand and grab all of those. And then what we're going to do is a pelt map, okay? So I'm going to come in here when your pelt map opens. This is your little UV editor, and you've got this little utility. And the first thing you want to down here in your pelt options is go to select the stretcher. That's the little device that's going to be stretching it and it needs to be larger so I'm going to scale it out to give plenty of room for this to unwrap okay and then I'm going to hit this start pelt and then it's going to just pull and stretch that out okay and then when you get it the way you want it you hit commit and now that's stretched out okay so um, we want to pack it so this is our pack button. So now it's packed into our UV space. Um, it is actually needs to be rotated some. I would rotate it up like so. We pack it in there. And now our um, checkers are kind of big. So I'm going to come back over to my shader and set it to show me okay and, and I see people doing this all the time I don't know why they're doing this you don't need this mapping coordinate in here you just need the checker pattern by itself and these these people in here are using a bitmap and I don't know why they're doing a bitmap for this either okay uh, okay so it's not a bitmap it's a map okay so I'm gonna come in here and let's go 30 for 30 let's look at that that's too small. So 10. Now we'll go back to, let's see what one. It was because they were using that other device to scale it with. Yeah, okay, a little bit smaller. Let's say five. Now it doesn't really matter what these are. These are nothing other than a mimicking what a pixel would be like on there so that we can just see what where our stretching is going to be on here, okay? Now you can see that my checkers are got all kinds of strange stretching going on, okay? And that's from that pelt map. So what I'm gonna do is just make a uh, copy of it here. And there's a couple of ways that you can deal with this now. So we'll go into this one and we're back into the UV unwrap and so we pick it and this button right here is a quick peel and it does a better job of uh, once you've pelted it it does a real good job of relaxing it to make for a more uniform unwrapping of it and now you can see that's much much better it's still got some areas in here and the reason it has those areas in there is because we really should cut little slits in here so that these could fold out a little bit. But you know, it's not really that bad, okay? Now I can show you a similar way to do that. Make another copy over here. And another way to do that is when you come in to go up here to your tools and come in to relax and then tell it to relax by polygon angles and then start relax and it'll start relaxing it. And then you stop it and then let's repack it. And then that gives you a pretty nice unwrap too. You'll see that that one is giving us a little bit better in these corners than this one did. Okay. And that's a pretty good unwrap. So um, that's doing a, a pelt map. Okay. So now let me open something that's a little a little bit harder to do and show you how to uh, proceed.
Okay, so here's another model that a student had, and I wanted to show just uh, how to uh, unwrap this. Okay, so it's different pieces. Now, you know, this student's already told me that they've already unwrapped all of these, okay, that this is unwrapped, okay? And uh, yes, you know, they have unwrapped it, they just didn't do a good job of unwrapping it, okay? And I'll just show you why. If I come in here and put, a UV unwrap on this, okay, and I go into it, and we pull up their unwrap, here's what their unwrap looks like, okay, and that's horrible, okay, I mean, this should be unwrapped as one piece, this is one piece, to take this in Photoshop, and to try to paint across this, and then paint over there, and what is this piece, and what is that piece, and what is this piece, and what is that piece, that is not what you're wanting to do, okay, so that's not a very good unwrap, okay? Now, the thing that I wouldn't have done, what the student has done is they've embedded the piping into this piece. So in other words, um, if we go ahead and turn our subdivisions on, what they've got is they're putting like some piping around here. And I would always do that piping as a separate piece. As a matter of fact, it is a separate piece. It's not part of the original piece. You want to build things the way that they're manufactured. And that piping is sewn on afterwards. So you really wouldn't want to build it that way. It's much easier and look better without it. Okay, so what we're going to do here is I'm going to show you how to do a correct unwrapping of this. Okay, so we're going to put our unwrap on. Now, when you first put your unwrap on, we can see the seams that already exist on this, and I don't want to see those seams right now. So um, I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to go right over here, and I'm going to say map seams, and I'm going to turn that off. All right. Now, another thing that I noticed about this piece, okay, which I would always fix beforehand, is can you see that its pivot point is way out here? Okay. And then if I hit J on the keyboard for bounding box, see how its bounding box is messed up? Its bounding box should be the shape of the object, okay? So we're gonna fix this before we go any further. So I'm gonna go to um, the effect is pivot, tell it to center it to the object, okay? Then I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna rotate, I'm gonna manually rotate this object so that I can get it pretty square to my viewport, okay? Now I'm going to reset the transformation, reset, reset, selected, convert it to an edible poly. And now it's bounding box is correct for this object. Okay. All right. So let's unwrap this now. Okay. So what we're going to do is come in here. Uh, let's put our UV unwrap on here. And I'm going to go to edge and I'm going to turn off the seams and then we're going to click this button right here, which is point to point seam, which basically allows me to just draw, you know, draw where I want the seams to be. Okay. So you're just clicking, click. And so I'm telling it where I want it to. split this. Okay, and then I think I will split it across here. So I'll split that off, and then I need a, some splits to this way. So we'll get a split that way. I don't need that little one right there. If you click this button and you hold down the Alt key, you can take away. So we'll let that cut across there. And I think I may need to cut it just a little bit more. They've got this piping built in here, which is really, I wouldn't have never done that, but we have to deal with it because it's in there. 
Okay, and then let's cut here. And there. Okay. So we're going to let it split itself there. So these will open up. It's going to split there where these open up. And then it will wrap this back piece back across. And that should get us a pretty good uh, unwrap. So we come over here, pick polys. We pick a poly, tell it to extend the pickle polys, and then we're going to do a peel. <clears throat> I'm sorry, not a peel, but a uh, pelt map. So here's our pelt map. We open up our options here. <clears throat> Select the stretcher, scale it out. Okay, then we're going to go over here, start the pelt, and that'll pelt it out, then commit the pelt then pack it, okay, and let's go ahead and put our uh, checker back on here, and you'll see it's it's pretty decent, but see that strangeness there, okay, so this is just the first step, and then what we want to do from there <clears throat> is then do a quick peel, and then repack it, and there is the final unwrap of that, I'll change my checkers. Let's go for. You see that they've got these checkers so high at like a hundred in here, which is really high. The reason is, is this person built this room, and the room, the walls are like two hundred feet tall, so it's a huge room. They've not paid attention to their measurements. You know, I don't know why. What you guys don't get about understanding about getting your measurements correct, but okay, there's a nice unwrap of this. And now you can render out a template of this, and then this would be able to be taken into Photoshop and painted on to get a nice texture on it. Okay, that's the way this stuff should be unwrapped. <coughs> and let's see how big this piece is. This is, <coughs> I don't know, was this supposed to be maybe two and a half to three feet tall, maybe? And so let's go to our customize our unit setup, and you'll see that they're not really setting their units up right. Okay. You want to go U.S. standard feet with decimal inches. And now let's go get our measuring tool over here. And let's see how big this thing is. It's 80 feet tall. This couch is 80 feet tall. Okay, it's 80 feet by 26 feet by 75 feet. That's a pretty big uh, back to your chair. Okay. This is a huge problem when you get into using procedural textures and you get into using um physical shaders and you're getting into using uh, physical lights if your objects are not to correct correct scale then you have all kinds of issues of trying to deal with those so you know that was pretty easy to unwrap this okay that's how you unwrap them and you know anything that has this organic kind of nature you want to paint textures you can't put a box map on it box maps only good for something that we're going to be using like a tileable textures on and something that's not going to be aged. You now we're gonna, it's, everything's gonna be brand new. So uh, when you're wanting to be able to actually, you know, unwrap something so that you can paint a texture map, then this is the way that uh, you should be unwrapping it so that we have a nice, a nice surface to bring into Photoshop and to paint on. Okay, hopefully that will help some of you guys on this room. Okay, thank you very much.